hi friends so welcome to all in this uh, video we are going to see the lab activity mapping the internet here we can see our objectives of this uh, lab activity in part 1 determine network connectivity to a destination host in part 2 trace a route to a remote server using tracer we will go through the background a route tracing computer software lists the network that data traverses from the users originating in the device to a distant destination device. This network tool is typically executed at the command line as here we can see that command tracer. Then we have to give either destination network name or entity device address. So this command usually we have to give in the Microsoft Windows systems. Or we have to give this command trace route. Either we have to give a destination network name or device address. So it's on Unix, Linux systems and Cisco devices such as switches and routers. Both the tracer and the trace route determines the route taken by packets across an IP network. The tracer or a trace route tool is often used for network troubleshooting. By showing a list of routers traversed the user can identify the path taken to reach a particular destination on the network or across internet networks. Each router represents a point where one network connects to another network and through which the data packet was forwarded. The number of routers is known as the number of hops the data traveled from source to destination. The displayed list can help identify data flow problems when trying to access a service such as a website. It can also be useful when performing tasks such as downloading data. If there are multiple websites mirrors available for the same data file, one can trace each mirror to get a good idea of which mirror would be the fastest to use. So command line based route tracing tools are usually embedded with the operating system of the entity device. This activity should be performed on a computer that has internet access and access to a command line. So here we can see the required resources PC with the internet access. Right, coming to part 1, determine network connectivity to a destination host. To trace the route to a distant network, the PC used must have a working connection to the internet. Use the ping command to test whether a host is reachable. Packets of information are sent to the remote host with instructions to replay. Your local PC measures whether a response is received to each packet and how long it takes for those packets to cross the network. Coming to A, at the command line prompt type ping www.cisco.com to determine if it is reachable. Here we can see, so we will take the command prompt using cmt and here we are going to give ping to www.cisco.com and here we can see we are getting the replay. Coming to B now ping one of the regional internet registry that is RIR websites are located in different parts of the world to determine if it is reachable. So here we can see uh, those RIR uh, for the Africa, Australia, South America and North America. So they are gi given a note here at the time of writing the European RIR that is www.ripe.net does not replay to ICMP echo request. The website you selected will be used in part 2 for use with the tracer command. Right. Coming to our command prompt. First of all, we will ping to www.afrinic.net and here we can see we are getting the replay. Now we will try to www.apnic.net We are getting the replay. Now we will try to www.lacnic.net Here we can see we are getting the replay. Also we will uh, try to ping to www.arin.net We are getting the replay. Also, we will uh, try to uh, ping to this uh, European RIR, that is 
r i p e dot net sure we won't get the replay here we can see request timed out now we will come to part 2 trace a route to a remote server using trace it after you determine if your chosen websites are reachable by using ping we will use a tracer to determine the path to reach the remote server. It is helpful to look more closely at each network segment that is crossed. Each hop in the tracer to results displays the routes that the packets take when traveling to the final destination. The PC sends three ICMP echo request packets to the remote host. Each router in the path decrements the time to leave that is TTL value by one before passing it to uh, passing it on to the next system when the decremented TTL value reaches zero the router sends an ICMP time exceeded message back to the source with its IP address and the current time when the final destination is reached an ICMP echo replay is sent to the source host for example, the source host sends three ICMP echo requests packets to the first hop that is 192.168.1.1 with the TTL value of 1. When the router 192.168.1.1 receives the echo request packets, it decrements the TTL value to 0. The router sends an ICMP time exceeded message back to the source. This process continues until the source host send the last three ICMP echo request packets with the TTL values of 8. Hope number 8 in the output below which is the final destination. Here we can see that. After the ICMP echo request packets arrive at the final destination, the rotor responds to the source with ICMP echo replies. For hopes 2 and 3, these IP addresses are private addresses. These routers are the typical setup for point of presence, that is POP, of ISP. The point of presence devices connect users to an ISP network. So here we can see these uh, hubs 2 and 3. Uh, they are uh, uh, private IP addresses. A web-based whois tool is found at here we can see the URL uh, http colon double slash whois dot domain tools dot com. It is used to determine the domains traveled from the source to destination. Right. So coming to A at the command line prompt, trace the route to www.cisco.com. Save the tracer output in a text file. Alternatively, you can uh, redirect the output to a text file by using uh, these symbols. So we are going to give this a uh, tracer command or we can uh, save into a uh, text. Well, coming to our uh, command prompt, here we are going to give tracer to www.cisco.com and here we can see the result. Right. Now coming to uh, B, the web-based tool at this uh, URL http colon double slash whois.domaintools.com can be used to determine the owners of the both the resulting IP address and domain names shown in the tracer tool output. Now perform a tracer to one of the RIR websites from part 1 and save the result. So here I am going to give the tracer to www.afrinic.net and here we can see the result also here we can see the tracer to this www.lacnic.net now we will come to this website Here we can see who is lookup. Here I am going to give enter a domain or IP address. So here we, we given this uh, 
www.lacnic.net And here we can see who is our code for lacnic.net. Here we can see the details. List the domains below from your tracer to results using the web-based whois tool. Anyway, here we can see uh, some of the uh, domains from this uh, uh, tracer result. And here we can see the domain. Right. And finally to lacnic.net. Next is uh, compare the list of uh, domains crossed to reach the final destinations. So in our uh, uh, tracer, uh, here we have seen uh, different uh, uh, domains. So here we can see asianet.co.in, uh, here we can see sgw.equinix.com, etc., etc. And finally, we reach us to this lacnic.net. Coming to the final reflection question, uh, what can affect tracer results? Obviously, a network outage or a firewalls blocking. Right. So that's all in this uh, lab activity mapping the internet. Uh, here we have seen uh, how to ping to a destination network. Also, we have seen how to use this uh, uh, trace it command or trace root command to trace a route to a remote server.